In Genesis 2.24, God says, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Becoming one flesh is the Bible's euphemism for sex. According to the Bible, there is nothing wrong with sex. God created the pleasure of sex to be a natural bond between husband and wife, enhancing the experience of marriage and creating a personal intimacy between spouses that no other relationship could match or disrupt. God did this to establish the family as an enduring unit to provide a healthy environment for children. Our sexuality is not an insignificant thing. It's not just a fun activity between consenting adults. Because of procreation, this act of becoming one flesh is the most consequential of all human activity. So understandably, God demands real commitment with the sexual union. Such commitment that in Ephesians 5.28, he says, So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. But fornication, adultery, pornography, and no-fault divorce undermine God's purpose in marriage. Adultery can do irreparable harm to marriage, even when spouses are willing to forgive and carry on. Divorce does serious psychological damage to children, even when they seem to understand and manage to cope. And fornication is the deadliest sin of all. In our day, sexual freedom without the commitment of marriage has caused deadly epidemics, killing possibly hundreds of millions worldwide. And sexual freedom for women requires the option of extreme birth control, abortion on demand, resulting in the systematic slaughter of unborn babies, adding up to billions of deaths in our lifetime. People are dying right now all over the world because of the abuse of human sexuality. Sexual lust is never satisfied outside of traditional marriage. Indulgence always increases lust. Men and women exceed in lustfulness till they lose all sense of decency, dishonoring themselves in uncleanness, even to homosexuality and other unnatural affection. Romans 1.24 says God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Even the women did change their natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly. In our modern culture, saturated with free sex, it is no surprise that many people become sexually disoriented. And perhaps the disoriented find some comfort in imagining themselves as normal in some alternate sense of that word. But God considers sexual reorientations sinful because they defy God's original design. In fact, Anything that undermines marriage as God originally designed and intended is a great sin. But there's more. Marriage was invented and designed to explain God's love for his own people. Marriage is a figure of Christ and the church. God created marriage and prescribed an ordered family, imposing ultimate responsibility on the husband to establish a God-fearing home to bring up godly children, and to love his wife as Christ loved us. He commands the wife to guide her children and love her husband and help him and obey him. God describes his idea of marriage many times in the Bible. In Ephesians 5.33, he says, Let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. God's wholesome design is ridiculed in our generation, but God doesn't apologize for it. It is an illustration of God's tender love, and he notices when we disregard it. Families and children suffer when God's way is ignored or rejected. 
And God's way is not negotiable. God won't change. He expects us to conform to his will. In our day, sexual sin is everywhere, greatly offending God and defiling all of us. And resistance to God's order in marriage is pervasive, even among Christians. But God will forgive all who change their minds and agree with him, even if we are especially guilty. Like a man who sacrifices himself to provide for and to protect his bride, Jesus gave his life for us. He paid the price for our forgiveness, and his blood cleanses from all sin. If you believe God's word and realize that God is offended at you because of your modern attitude, you can change your mind. No matter how guilty you are of sexual uncleanness, you still may pray to God in the name of Jesus Christ and humbly ask him for cleansing. Tell him you believe his word and you want to be forgiven and you want to do things his way. If you mean it, he will not turn you away.